tebe. Fakt, že ja nejaké to prelej som. So, what is the metaverse? What is the metaverse? Oh, oh, nothing. What is the metaverse? Hello, Ted. So before we go to this question, has anyone read the recent McKinsey report on value creation in the metaverse that came out just a couple of weeks ago? The, the side question they asked is, what is the value of the metaverse? I mean, does anyone here have a, a guess? What's the value of the metaverse in dollar terms? Anyone? So according to McKinsey, it's $5 trillion, right? We are at, what is the metaverse? This is a $5 trillion question. The metaverse is valued by McKinsey at $5 trillion by, the end of two, by 2030, the end of this decade. What is the metaverse? Right. So according to McKinsey, according to Mark Zuckerberg in Meta, the metaverse will be characterized by more immersive human interaction. The metaverse will be the blurring of the boundaries between the digital and the physical worlds. The metaverse, according to Mark Zuckerberg, will be technology-enhanced human interaction to allow human presence um, regardless of space. It's as though you can be there no matter how far away you actually are. And, and this is all wonderful. You know, human presence, we felt that all in the pandemic, we're yearning for more effective human presence. But is that metaverse? Is that the answer to the $5 trillion question we are asking today? So um, I'm Oscar Franklin Tan. I'm the Chief Financial Officer of Engine. We are helping launch Infinity, the infrastructure of the metaverse on Polkadot. Infinity is the sixth parachain, the first NFT parachain. Uh, launched mainnet after the crowd loan last March. So we think that more immersive human interaction is wonderful, but not quite enough to build the metaverse. Uh, this is a Polkadot conference. This is a Web3 conference. So we think that the linchpin of the metaverse would have to be digital ownership. If you don't have genuine digital ownership, it's not quite going to be the metaverse. If human interaction, despite more immersive technology, will still follow an underlying architecture characterized by a centralized authority, then it's still the same internet, just with better graphics. Perhaps that's not very interesting to all the people assembled here today. So, we, uh, as we've been discussing since yesterday, we've had some amazing talks. Digital ownership, Web3, unlocks so many new models for human interaction. Right? It unlocks governance models. It unlocks uh, economic models. It unlocks Web3. Maybe the, the interesting thing is that the honest answer is that we don't quite know the exact shape or form that the metaverse will take, despite all the amazing things we've been discussing since yesterday. But that's actually OK. Uh, if we go back to Web2, well, who knew that the pinnacle of Web2 would be TikTok dance videos, right? So we don't quite know what the metaverse will exactly look like. We don't quite know yet what the answer to the $5 trillion question will be. But perhaps the interesting way of approaching the question is, regardless of what form the metaverse will eventually take, well, um, are we building it on Polkadot? Right? Is the interoperability, the shared security, the customizability of uh, Polkadot an excellent platform on which to build what we are calling the metaverse, regardless of the form it's going to take? So we think Affinity is a great uh, parachain. There's a lot of thinking, great engineering going into it. It's an NFT-specific uh, parachain with very NFT-specific features. But even Affinity would not be enough to build the metaverse, uh, you know, perhaps against my interest. It's going to take a lot more. And I think that, that a lot more has been discussed uh, in the various talks we've been having since yesterday. Uh, as an aside, 
we were, we were presenting with Polkadot in Davos uh, just a month ago. We were fortunate to have Nick Clegg from Meta to discuss Meta's vision for the metaverse. I actually walked up to him and asked, so uh, is Meta going to help keep the metaverse open and decentralized? Right? Is genuine digital ownership, the Web3 vision, relevant to what Meta is building? My best recollection of what he answered was, uh, it's in Meta's sincere commercial self-interest to keep the metaverse open and decentralized. Because otherwise, well, maybe people won't use it. Maybe users won't think it's going to be fun. Maybe people will feel it's not genuine. They won't be attracted to it. They won't go to it. So as I said, we're, we're still not sure of what the exact shape or form the metaverse will take. Uh, we're, it's still unfolding. We're going to see how exactly it's going to be built. Um, so aside from an open and decentralized architecture, Right? We think that an emphasis on digital ownership should drive a broader vision of NFTs. So, yes, uh, we associate NFTs with nice pictures of apes. We associate NFTs with uh, nice videos of uh, basketball shots. But that's really just the alpha version of uh, NFTs and the metaverse. Right? We think NFTs can do a lot more. With Affinity, the vision would be that you need you need a, a chain that can help process NFT transfers by the tens of thousands per second. You know, while the Mar for Integrity was just alluding to this vision right before I got on stage, right? So if, if you have this kind of vision, if you need to power NFT transfers by the tens of thousands per second, by definition, you're not having ultra-rare collectible NFTs, right? There can only be so many million-dollar ape NFTs in the world by definition, by sheer mathematics. So if we have that kind of metaverse, where you're thinking of tens of thousands of NFT transfers per second, necessarily you're using NFTs not because they're uh, just rare, collectible, but it's because they're underlying a new layer of human interaction. You know, they're part of how we interact every day. So we, we, have, uh, we developed a QR code distribution solution in Engine called Beam. Right? We can distribute NFTs by QR code. Uh, we can post a QR code physically, say, put it right here on this podium. We can show it on screen. Everyone here can scan a QR code, get an NFT, uh, just to say that you're here. Uh, are you going to auction off these NFTs a year later? You know, will, will they be uh, absolutely collectible? Maybe not. Will they be meaningful to everyone here to remind us all that we are all here together? Probably. So, again, we, we need to broaden the vision of NFTs. Uh, NFTs, as you recall, is just any unique item. Uh, it can be many things. You can have an event ticket that's an NFT. It can give you access to the event. It can let you receive content later on. Um, it, can, it can allow you to form a community around the content creator. You know, we're interested in NFTs that do a lot of things. They can plug into platforms. They can be part of governance. You know, they can show a certain status, belonging in a certain community. Right. Now, many of the building blocks we're thinking uh, that are a part of the metaverse are what we've been discussing. Some of these use cases are exactly familiar to you because they've been, uh, they're what we've been discussing. Uh, so is Kilt here today? Is, uh, is, is Ing has Ingo arrived? I see some Kilt shirts. Uh, let, let, let's ask the Kilt team. Oh, there they are. Uh, home court advantage. Uh, yeah. Kilt, uh, Kilt owns Berlin, right? <laughs> so Kilt team, I mean, can you, have, can you maximize NFTs without digital identity? Yes, no? No. <laughs> yeah, okay. I'll take that as a no, right? Uh, so yesterday, Ingo was right here on this stage saying that Kilt has applications where you can assign a digital identity. Uh, you, you can use their technology to track the creator of an NFT separate from the current ownership. And th that's very important. You can't have a, a content creation without verifying the creator, verifying that provenance, even using it uh, to track physical goods, to track the manufacturer of a physical item, to track an NFT. Is, is that part of the metaverse? 
Yes. Uh, is, is, is Moonbeam here, Sam? Right? So can you, can you, have, um, can you maximize NFTs without smart contracts? Ingo's also saying you can, you, you can uh, use Kilt applications on Moonbeam without even touching uh, the, you know, the Kilt network, you know, the power of uh, shared security and interoperability. You know? um, Ro Robonomics, is Sergey here? All right, I see Sergey right there. So can you, Sergey, can you maximize NFTs without connections to physical networks? Of course not. Of course not. That's it. So, um, again, right before I got on stage, we, we had Miroslav here saying that NFTs connected to IoT networks right, will be a key innovation in fighting climate change. So, is that part of what we're going to say is the metaverse? Yeah, we would think so. Actually, le le let me just pause here and chill my good friend Sergey for a while. So we were together in Davos, and he stole the show. If I don't quite know if you can see it, it's a little small. But if you, so he showed up in Davos, brought out his laptop, uh, stole the show away from the presenters. And if, if you look closely, right there in the center of the laptop screen is his robot dog, OK? We were in Switzerland, and he said, I have my team on the other side of the planet in California with a Boston Dynamics robot dog controlled by my Polkadot.js wallet, which is loaded on my laptop. And by the way, he let me play with it. <laughs> So, can you have a metaverse without a robot dog connected? Can you have a metaverse without a city of robot dogs connected? So, Sergey from Robonomics said, of course not, right? So, I can go on and on. Uh, Akala, is Dan still here? I saw him in the audience a while ago. Dan, are you here? Uh, I think, uh, yeah, there's, there's a really, oh, there he is. Great party last night, I heard. So, Dan, can you have a metaverse um, without AUSD, without a stable coin? Can you have a content uh, creator economy without ways of paying people? No. By the way, Dan drilled my whole team uh, to say that AUSD is over-collateralized and non-algorithmic. We've been uh, s saying that as our script for the last few weeks, uh, helping the ecosystem. So I, I could go on and on, right? We could go through the entire room. You know what the answer is going to be. Like, a lot of the infrastructure we're building here today is relevant to what we call the metaverse. This vision of an open, decentralized uh, metaverse you know, to the next layer of the internet, to deeper human interaction. But let me just pick up on some of the things we discussed in Davos, even beyond all the amazing things we've been discussing since yesterday. Can, so beyond economic models, beyond governance models, can Web3, can genuine digital ownership um, enhance human life on an even more fundamental level? So in Davos, uh, Dr. Gavin Wood, who we listened to yesterday, I had a new challenge. Can you build a better social media using Web3? Can you restore trust and transparency in Web3? Can you, uh, in social media, can you reshape social media using Web3 so that you take back ownership of your data, of your interactions? Can you reshape social media so it's not built around the architecture of a centralized database underneath? Is that part of our vision of the metaverse? Is that part of an open and decentralized metaverse? It, it has to be. That's human interaction on a more fundamental level than we've, uh, we've been thinking of before. Uh, we had Nick Thompson from The Atlantic lead a panel of very senior journalists at the Polkadot Davos event. Can we put truth on blockchain? Can we put truth on Web3? That's not an abstract concept, uh, same as how Miroslav was not discussing Web3 and climate change in any abstract way, no. Truth in blockchain. Can you use NFTs and blockchain uh, to put r news reports, the source reports of news, pictures used in news reports on the blockchain, real time, to track the components of what goes into journalism, can you use that to restore trust and transparency in journalism? So again, even beyond everything we've been discussing yesterday, this is talking about Web3 um, on changing human interaction in a much more fundamental way. And 
Oh, sorry, my, my team just uh, really laughed at this, <laughs> this photo. So, Dr. Gavin Wood, Web3, social media, more genuine fundamental human interaction, take away the underlying centralized database. So, again, just, just, to, just, to, uh, just to sum up, um, <laughs> sorry, uh, my team asked me to say this. Uh, uh, so I'm Oscar Franklin Tan, uh, Chief Financial Officer of Affinity, uh, of Engine. Like we're helping launch Affinity, the infrastructure of the metaverse and Polkadot, the sixth uh, parachain, uh, the first NFT chain. Right? We, we think that the metaverse, beyond, uh, more, beyond more immersive uh, human interaction, has to be characterized by genuine digital ownership. It's not just more immersive human interaction, but more authentic, more liberating human interaction. Um, we think that Polkadot, the shared security and interoperability, is a great, great platform for building it. We think we should change the narrative, right? Uh, it's not just building cross-chain interoperability. Um, it, it's building the metaverse with all the components we've discussed uh, since yesterday. And you know, we think it's, uh, it's all going to be great, so we hope we build the metaverse together on Polkadot, on Infinity. So thank you, everyone. All right, we have time for one question here, and it is, what would you like to see people do in the metaverse uh, this next year that maybe isn't created yet or have been built yet? Um, Honestly, we think, we think we'd like to see people do everything on the metaverse. I mean, everyone wants to see work conferences go to the metaverse, right? Um, like, uh, we, you can have training events, education go on the metaverse. You can have recreation, social go on the metaverse. Waldemar already described how gaming is probably the first use case, uh, a very natural use case for the metaverse. So, yeah, we don't know, and you know, we're going to see. Um, you know, so many people are building, so many, so, so many uh, institutions are coming in. We ourselves for Affinity have some announcements lined up. So yeah. the year is not even halfway through. Exciting, exciting. Looking forward to those announcements. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Oscar. Thank you. Thank you.